Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the online class. Today's topic is demodulation of FM signals and super heterodyne receivers. The course title is Triple E351352 Analog Slash Principles of Communication Systems. I am Dr. Zishan Kareem from EC Department to UI Bar Campus. Okay, let's first discuss the lecture contents. We will cover in this video FM demodulator and the type of FM demodulator is a slope detector or the slope demodulator. Uh, FM demodulator using slope detector. And the other topic which we will cover in detail is the super heterodyne receivers that are usually adopted in AM and the FM modulation as well. Okay, let's move to the detailed contents. First of all, we will discuss the FM slope demodulator. What is the main principle of FM slope demodulator and how it works, we will discuss here. First, first we have to know that the, in summary, the, uh, what we use to demodulate the FM signal is we first convert the FM to the AM signal, right? And we know that for AM demodulation, we can just use the envelope detector to detect the AM signal. So the additional steps here adopted is to convert the FM to the AM. And the slope circuit or the slope detector perform this operation. How it works? Let's move on. Principle. So use slope detector, slope circuit as a frequency discriminator. Right? It will differentiate the frequencies and the end which implements frequency to voltage conversion and there is a one frequency to voltage conversion curves we will use these curves are the characteristics uh, are the response to plot the uh, voltage from this frequency so slope detector slope circuit output voltage is proportional to the input frequency right okay let's move on this is a tuned circuit and how it works, we will discuss later in the coming upcoming slides. Okay, first of all, if we have a message signal, carrier signal, and the FM moderated signal. So, if you have a message signal, the upper voltage is 7 volt and the lower voltage is 1 volt, right? 1 volt. And this is a carrier signal which is 10 volt plus 10 volt minus 10 volt, which is a sinusoidal carrier signal. And after FM modulation, this signal and this signal is modulated using FM modulation. Then uh, we have a 14 kilohertz, the upper frequency, the higher frequency. And the, for the lower, this value amplitude, we have a lower frequency, which is around 200 kilohertz. So we have a two frequencies. One is that 1400 kilohertz, the other is the 200 kilohertz. And we have a characteristics of the frequency selective network. So this is a frequency on the x-axis and the voltage gain on the y-axis, right? This is voltage gain on the y-axis and the frequency at the x-axis. There is a one center frequency which is called the resonant frequency, FR here, right? FR is the resonant frequency and it must be higher than the uh, frequency that exists in the upper frequency that exists in the FM moderated signal. And in our case, it is 1400 kilohertz. So we selected here as a 1600 kilohertz, the resonant frequency, right? So for 1600 kilohertz, the gain will be one, right? This is one. And for the 1400 kilohertz, we have a gain which is 0.7, right? And for 200 kilohertz, it is around 0.2, right? So this is frequency voltage curve. And we will use this curve to obtain the demodulated signal. Let's move on. Okay, the frequency at which gain is maximum is called the resonance frequency. So in this uh, example, we will take the, uh, it is necessary, first of all, it should be noticed that it is always required to have a high resonance frequency than the FM signal frequency. So we selected here a resonant frequency to 1600 hertz as an example. Let's move to the major operational steps. So when we apply the input signal, 
to the coupled tune circuit, uh, which is coupled to the tune circuit. So when it passes, FM signal passes to this circuit, their current amplitude multiply with the mentioned gain at the specific frequency in the magnitude frequency response curve. What does it mean? As we already uh, discussed in the previous slide, that for each when it uh, there is a gain, right? Like this one. So uh, for 1400, for example, 1400 hertz, we have a gain of 0.7, right? And for 200, we have a gain of 0.2, right? So when it passes, and for 1600, this one. So when it passes, uh, FM signal passes to the circuit their current amplitude. For example, the 400 for 1400 kilohertz, we have an uh, modulated signal 10, voltage is 10, and the current amplitude is 0.7 for 1400, right? So we will get the sound voltage in the output, this point, right? And when there is a low frequency part, 200 kilohertz, so the gain is 0.2, so 10 into 0.2, we will get the 2 volt, this one, right? So in this way, we plot the curve, so after passing to this circuit, we will get the EM signal. Afterwards, we'll pass to the envelope detector because as we got the EM signal, so when we pass it to the envelope detector, now it is by using just envelope detector uh, diode and the resistor, we can get the AM signal, message signal out of this. So this is the process to extract the message signal out of the AM signal. As you know that the tone circuit is a non-linear circuit, so the output will have a slope error. So for instance, originally we have an input signal with a minimum voltage of 1 volt, but here we get 2 volt as output. So there is a mismatch between the input and output. To overcome this issue, balanced slope detector is usually adopted. So balanced slope ad uh, detector is different as compared to the slope detector we just did. Discussed. and this is not the part of the course as well so for the mathematical analysis let's move discuss the circuit in detail so this is our slope circuit and this is envelope detector right and we have an input signal AC cos 2 pi FCT 2 pi KF Simply this is FM modulated signal and you know that instantaneous frequency is FC plus KF MT so let the slope circuit be simply a differentiator Usually the slope is defined by using in differentiation. So instead of slope circuit, we say that we have a differentiator. So when this signal will pass to the differentiator, it will just differentiate this S of T. So after taking differentiation, we have a sign and the uh, cos, we have a sign, right, this term, and then the amplitude of this one, which is minus AC 2 pi FC plus 2 pi KF MT, right? sign change due to differentiation. So if we want, we will pass to the envelope detector. So the output, we only have an envelope, which is the amplitude of the signal. So this is the amplitude. So we get this envelope, right? So this is the output uh, mathematical analysis of a FMD modulator using slope detector, right? So we get the amplitude only. And this amplitude will be the real message which we transmitted. So S naught T linear with MT. So S naught T is approximately equal to the MT. Okay, the next topic is the super heterodyne receiver. So radio receiver's main function is there are, this is a complete receiver which have a number of blocks. So first of all, we have a demodulation to get the message signal, right? Carrier frequency tuning to select the station because if you studied AM, FM, there, if you heard there are a number of channel of AM radios, FM radio, so you need to tune one channel. For example, 88 megahertz, 90 megahertz, 100 megahertz. You need to select a frequency. So that selection is called the carrier frequency tuning, and we select that station, right? So we have a carrier frequency tuning uh, in the receiver side, right? And the filtering. To remove the noise or the interference, so there is a filtering block as well. Amplification to combat the transmission power loss because uh, when it, the signal travels, then there is a power loss as well due to distance 
due to other factors. So to overcome this power loss, we have a block additional block in the heterodyne receiver, which is called the amplification block. So this superheterodyne receiver, why it is called a heterodyne? It was, uh, it is called a heterodyne because they mix two signals for, and mixing two signals for new frequency. They just mix the two signals to generate the new frequency. So it is called a heterodyne. So super heterodyne receiver, heterodyne, it will heterodyne the radio frequency signal with the local carrier or the local tuner to convert to the common intermediate frequency. So what is the benefit of super heterodyne receiver? We have a same intermediate frequency. Why we convert it to intermediate frequency? This is a fixed lower frequency, for example, and all the uh, processing will be done in this uh, lower frequency. And this will be advantage for the uh, in, in terms of a circuit and the other advantages as well. And we need a one circuit for the number of channels, right? We will see this later on. Okay, let's discuss the block diagram of a super heterodyne receiver. So this is a receiver side, receiving antenna, the RF radio frequency amplifier, and then this is a mixer to convert this. This mixer is used to convert it to the intermediate frequency. And then filter as mentioned to convert, uh, to remove the noise, demodulator to detect or uh, understand or demodulate the signal and the RD amplifier is the power amplifier to improve, improve the power loss, right? So what are the advantages of super heterodyne receiver? A signal block can hardly uh, is achieve its all selectivity, sig signal quality, and the power amplification. So super heterodyne receiver deals with them with a different block. So there are different blocks. A single block is not a signal, it's a single block, right? Is a single, there is no single block, there are a number of blocks in the super heterodyne receiver. RF block, selectivity only. So in RF, there is only a selectivity. And afterwards, the processing is done in the RF blocks. Filter for high signal quality, amplification, use circuits that work only in constant intermediate frequency, not large band. So these are the advantages of RF processing that whenever there is a radio frequency of any frequency, any range of frequency, but we have a processing in the similar frequency. It's a constant higher frequency. So it has a same circuitry, uh, high signal quality, and not large band required. Okay, let's uh, discuss uh, with some example uh, about, by taking some example, how this uh, super added time receiver work in the next slide. So, okay, example with the concept of image frequency. We will also discuss the concept of image frequency and how we can avoid the image frequency as well. Here, uh, we are considering the example of uh, AM signal, uh, AM radio, which has a uh, usually frequency range from 550 to 1650 kilohertz, right? So, we are considering uh, that frequency range because we are taking AM signal. So here the IF frequency, intermediate frequency, is fixed at 455 kilohertz. It means that all the processing will be done in the 455 kilohertz. Either the signal transmitted is 600 kilohertz, 1000 kilohertz, 1510 kilohertz, 1650 kilohertz, any signal, but the intermediate frequency is fixed, which is 455 kilohertz. So we need to adjust the local oscillator to give that output. So we need we have a local oscillator block as we already discussed. So we need adjustment uh, of this local oscillator frequency to get the same intermediate frequency. So for example, this is local oscillator frequency we can get by uh, FC carrier frequency and the intermediate frequency. So intermediate frequency is 455 fixed one, right? And uh, carrier frequency we know that because uh, if we are transmitting on 600 kilohertz, so 600 and 455. So we will add them. So we have a, a local oscillator frequency. So which will be adjusted. So it will be in this case, for example, 1055, right? 1055. So we will adjust the local negative frequency to 1055 to receive the 600 kilohertz, right? So in this way, for 1000, we will adjust again and so on. Okay. So 
there are three uh, radio station which we need to listen for example uh, radio station 1 which is tuned at 600 kilohertz uh, which uh, which is transmitting at 600 kilohertz 1000 kilohertz the radio station 2 and the last station is 1510 kilohertz and we would like to listen these three uh, radio station one by one okay first of all if we want to listen to the 600 kilohertz so we will tune the local oscillator to receive up to 1055 so to receive 455 kilohertz because i mentioned that 600 plus 455 is 1055 so tune the local oscillator to 105 to listen 600 kilohertz because the intermediate frequency is fixed for everyone similarly for the other case if you would like to listen to the, the 1000 kilohertz, we will tune it to the 1455 kilohertz to get the fixed frequency of intermediate frequency 455 kilohertz. But there is another problem uh, which is called the image frequency. Image frequency means that if you tune to the one frequency but you get the uh, interference from the other frequency it means that you are at the same time you are listening to the two channels how it happens for example let's take the case of a local oscillator frequency of 1055 right this is the case of the 1055 local oscillator so to get the 600 kilohertz you have a you have tuned the local oscillator to 1055 so the difference between 1055 and 600 is 455 right here we mentioned Similarly, if you take the difference between 1055 and the 1000, right, the difference is 55. This is not 455, right? The third case, if you take the 1055 here, right, the local oscillator, and the input is, for example, 1510, the third case, right, in the 1510, then there is also a difference of 455. Although the sign is minus 455, but in the uh, you know that the cos of minus theta is equal to the theta. So this doesn't matter here, right? Equals to theta, cos theta. So it doesn't matter. So if you tune to the minus local oscillator to the 1055, then the difference between them is still the 455. So it means that the, this is the image of the first one. So when you tune to the first, you can, uh, when you want to tune uh, to the first, then you will still get the signal of the third signal, the third transmission as well. So this needs to be overcome. So let's check in the next slide, how can we overcome this issue? So there is a error 455 as after uh, subtracting give the image frequency problem because 1055, 15, 10, the difference is 455 as I mentioned this is called the image frequency problem so we can detect the image frequency image frequency is the F S uh, your station frequency plus twice of the intermediate frequency so if you want to detect or find the image frequency of a one station for example your station is 600 and you want to see that what will be the image frequency of this one so you need to add the twice of the intermediate frequency into the station frequency then you will get the image frequency which is 1510 so we need to avoid this uh, in that design to avoid uh, this frequency in order to overcome the problem of the image frequency for the 600 kilohertz so this is the uh, uh, this is the heterodyne receiver working procedure plus the image frequency problem how we can avoid so this is all from this chapter for the next chapter we will discuss it later on so thank you for listening and attending the uh, lectures for question and session there will be a separate online session the exact date and time will be communicated later on thank you very much